Good morning everybody, it's Michael here from the Trading Institution of Order Flow Thread on Forex Factory. It's the 20th of July 2017, it's 5 a.m. UK time. Um, I wanted to look at some daily charts today um, and we will get to that shortly, but I would like to start, if I may, with a question from Gary, a new member, a new poster on, on the thread. Welcome, Gary. Thank you for the question, um, and I, I would like to break it down a little bit um, more for you rather than us typing ourselves to, to death. So I will move over your picture um, and also try to explain it, but let's, let's go to a chart. Let's pick a pair, for example, any pair. So here you find the CAD yen. And you are asking, you are asking, your question is, is really pretty much rally-based rallies, um, what type of orders are there? Are they buy stop or buy limit? By definition, a buy stop order is always placed above current price, right? So if I wanted to buy this market right now where it is, and I was going to use a buy stop order, my buy stop order would have to be above, anywhere above where price is right now. It can be one tick above, it can be 500 ticks above. It doesn't really matter. And for supply and demand trading, if I just bring over your picture. So this is a picture that you posted and this is very good artwork, by the way. Um, and I, I now know you have other skills other than trading. Well done. Um, this when this trader is going to place buy orders at 150 if he decides on this day however many days or weeks or months whatever these candles represent back he that's not when he's making his decision so you are you are always as i as i repeatedly say to, to guys you're always starting with current price why did price why were prices able to reach this far if we start from the top and work our way down why were prices able to come down this far these three red candles the only reason as far as supply and demand uh, methodology is concerned that is other methods may have other explanations but the only reason this was able to happen was because any orders in here to buy were filled not only filled but also there were leftover sell orders that's why prices could travel this low to whatever price this was so roughly about 212 or 215 this price right here the only reason it was able to travel this far is because all the buyers because as people are selling this market there are also people buying remember for every seller there's a buyer right so as people are selling it and prices are dropping there are people with open hands buying them so all those buy orders would have been filled as as prices went down but there will be leftover sell orders that's why prices keep dropping because people supply selling is coming into the market as prices are dropping now look at this area this is a demand zone that you've you've depicted here even before you get down to this one Here's a demand zone. What is here? The only thing that can be here are buy orders. How do we know that for sure? How do we know? Well, the reason is the resolution between um, the supply side of the market and the demand side of the market is only seen in price movement. The resolution of the equation between supply and demand is always seen in price movement now what price movement did we get when prices were stagnant here what was the resolution of what was going on in the background a move up in price so if there were sell orders here there's no way prices would have been able to move up if there were still sell orders here those those orders would have to be filled for this to happen so what you have left in here are buy orders now the question of are they buy stop orders well they they can't be buy stop orders if 
prices have already rallied up from them. Any buy stop orders that were that were placed above this area before this happened would have been filled when the rally happened. So prices are going up. People place a buy stop order, which is basically get me into this market when prices reach this level. Prices are trading at say we call this X minus one and X is above. So you place a buy stop order at X and you say prices get me in at X, which is above X minus one. So X minus one is down here, X is above here. Get me in at X, but prices are still down here when you place that order. When prices were up here and you place an order here, that's not a buy stop. A buy stop should be above where prices were up here. Limit orders happen here. But there is also a bit of a fallacy within supply and demand trading where people often think, and I get this question a lot, well, are you saying the institutions left orders there? This zone could be three years old. If this was a yearly chart, each one of these candles representing a year, you're looking at maybe what? Nine years before. Does that mean institutions left orders there for nine years? No. But who created these zones? Whose charts are we looking at? Charts of institutional trading because it's not our retail orders that are creating these price levels. It's institutions trading against each other. We, through the you know, availability of technology, are able to see their activities now so we can see how prices are moving. Whereas, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we, we would have had to hand draw these charts and that would be a lot of effort. But people did it. So it's, it's um, institutions who are making these levels. And when people talk about prices have memory, that's exactly right. Institutions do remember what happened at these price levels because they were involved in creating them. It was their transactions with each other that created these, um, these levels. So when prices come back, they will interact with those levels in similar ways. That's at least that's the assumption within the methodology that if there are buy orders here, when prices come back to it, you're likely to see some more buying. They're not setting limit orders there and waiting for nine years, or, or even if this was a four hour chart waiting, I don't know, 36 hours. They will buy. When they will buy with, with limit orders when prices get down in here. It doesn't really make much difference how they buy. Some of them will buy with buy stop orders. As prices come in and it's going out, they'll put their orders at the top. It really makes no difference. So the idea is they are buying. What type of order they're using to buy is not as relevant as actually what it is that they are doing. So I, I hope that that answers your question. And as for this area, again, there are buy orders here. We know that how? Because of the rally out of the zone. Um, that's the only way prices could have left this basing area. If there were still sell orders here, prices would have had to stay there until those orders were filled if it was eventually going to rally up okay so let's go back to the charts i hope that helps atx i hope that helps um let's go back and quickly have a look at some some charts i'm sure a, a lot of other people had similar questions so thank you for asking it so we might as well start with the cad yen where we are so right now for day trading we're kind of um, not really anywhere um, so we have supply up in there that we need to um, that we need to get to and the nearest fresh demand there's a little bit of demand down in here but that's still far away so it, there isn't really anything you can get stuck into you might you might just want to continue buying in this market um, if you see opportunities on quality opportunities on smaller time frames and the Australian, I think, yeah, it might be an idea to look at the um, the yen and the euro because I know they'll be having some news later on in the day. So those are the two levels we're looking at for, for short-term trading. Let's look at the euro pairs. So I think Draghi is going to be speaking today. So we have some demand down in there. There is some supply here. It's not the greatest kind of level. It's very wicky. There is there. So it's it's likely to be a movement. That one's been removed. It's likely to be a movement between these zones um, today. 
Um, there are obviously more demand levels down in there. The quality is a different matter though. For the Euro CAD, oh, we've already gone through this. We've already tagged that. There's a good trade. And we're down in here. We're coming up into some demand right now. Again, because of the fact that you are in a downtrend, the downside pressure is still significant. But for short term trading, you made your money trading this level. For now, because of, of um, how lightly this zone has been touched, I'm going to still keep it on the chart and see what happens. It's not fresh. It's not ideal. The fresh level is down here. And there isn't any fresh supply either until up in here. So not great opportunities in the EuroCAD, but they're, they're there. That one, have we hit it? We're sitting up in there. We're working our way from there. And we're coming towards here. So this is the area where I'd be interested in, in buying that. We get a pop back up into this area. Let's take a look on, say, a four hour. So there you go. That's the area that I would be interested in selling the Euro Swiss personally. There's obviously more above, but it has to get through this to get there. Okay, let's go to the Euro Pound, then we'll look at some Yen pairs. Um, so the Euro Pound is interesting. The Euro Pound is sitting in supply right now, or coming off of supply. The nearest fresh demand is not till there, so selling opportunities should be possible. Uh, we've already worked through one. There's another one above there. Let's take a look on the one hour and see if there's anything. Mm, the only thing on the one hour right now is that. So that will be a level um, to consider right here. Right here. Would be one to look at going into the news announcements today. Okay, so let's take a look at the yen pairs very quickly. Um, Sorry about the length of the video, guys. It's a bit longer than usual, but I think it's necessary. So we're at this demand zone. What do we have in terms of supply above? So I think, yeah, we're still in our, we, we talked about this zone on the round table um, a few days back. And we, we, so it's basically like these two levels right here. So we're, we're at them and we've worked our way down from them. The issue we were talking about was the potential profit margin because we had demand sitting there and we're still working our way through it. It's it's not looking good for attempts to buy right now um, because you still have decent supply above that's yet to be tested. So we'll see how that how that pans out. But these are the levels that are in play. If we get a big breakdown, then you know ultimately that's the area we would be looking at. If we get a pop up then we would be looking into into that area. Okay, let's take a look at the US dollar yen as well, because I think there is still yet some news to come out on the US. Oh, very nice. So we are, I think we somebody talked about it, or did I post a chart about this on the thread? So some, this is what we're working through. It's very tight, very tight, even for a day trader, it's very tight. But I, uh, it's it's what we've got. It's what we've got. So these are the levels t uh, I, I'm looking at. Um, so prices have come to demand. They're working their way back up. We have fresh supply above as well. So these are the areas I'd be looking to apply tactics to engage the market. Um, any other yen pairs? Did we, I think we started with CAD yen, Euro yen we've looked at, US dollar yen. Should we look at the... Um, Where's my Swiss yen? Let's take a look at that and see. Similar to the to the other one we just looked at. So we, in this one we have supply now above here, right here. We've got some very low quality demand in here, but it's it is there. Actually, you could include the other candle as well. So we do have supply there, room to go there, room to go down in here. So these are the levels I'll be watching. So I, I'm going to stop the video now. Um, but thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the questions and, and interacting with each other. Um, very cool. Very cool. Okay. Okay, guys. Have a great week. Have a great weekend.
trade safe. Bye for now.